The first night I got the review copy of Super Mario Maker 2, I was so enthralled that I ended up staying up until 1am playing the game non-stop. Then when my alarm went off at 7am, I was right back into playing the game. That's just how engaging Super Mario Maker 2 has been, and after more than 25 hours of beating almost every user-generated stage that was uploaded to a special pre-release media server, I think I'm ready to give my final verdict. Name's Dave with Mojo Plays, and this is my review of Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Maker 2! If you've played Super Mario Maker on the Wii U, or dare I say it, the 3DS version, then you should be familiar with the game's main selling point. Super Mario Maker 2 features an incredibly robust level editor that allows players to create their own levels in the styles of Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, Super Mario World, New Super Mario Bros U, and new to this game, a 2D rendition of Super Mario 3D World. The latter featuring enemies and assets you cannot find in other game modes, making its levels feel distinct and different compared to the other four interchangeable choices. <laughs> Since the original game utilized the Wii U gamepad for designing levels, ideally the best way to build new levels would be to use the Switch in handheld mode. Creating levels this way feels nearly identical to using the gamepad, even if you don't have access to a stylus. It is possible to create levels in docked mode, and you can get used to the shortcuts mapped to all the buttons, though it's not the ideal choice. Still, I was able to put together an average stage in about 40 minutes once I got the hang of all the features. Three, two, one. Super. There's also a handful of new features to make the UI far easier to navigate. Categorized selection wheels makes picking objects way more easier than before, and thankfully, with the exception of a few power-ups, nearly every object is available to the player when they start playing. No more waiting more than a week to unlock everything. Let's go. If your level design skills leave something to be desired, thankfully Nintendo has you covered. The game comes with about 45 short lessons on level design theory, with your lecturer being a pigeon for... reasons. These are really worth checking out even if you've played the first game, as they can give the player some very nuanced tricks that can greatly increase the presentation of your course. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no amiibo support, which also means there's no costume mushrooms from other properties. Given that these were only used in the SMB1 theme as a cosmetic change in the first Super Mario Maker, I'm personally not phased by this, but if you're an amiibo collector, well, sorry. Since the Switch is a hybrid handheld system, there will be instances where the player won't be able to access the online courses, which is where this sequel's biggest new addition comes in, the story mode. In this mode, Mario and the Toads have to rebuild Peach's castle after it accidentally gets demolished. You accomplish this by completing a set number of jobs which earn you coins. These jobs are professionally made levels, and they are very well designed levels. Probably some of the best I've ever seen from a 2D Mario game. Each one is built around a central theme that is not only very fun to play through, but serves as a great way to give players inspiration for making their own stages. Some of my favourites included an auto-scrolling stage where Mario is constantly being stalked by the new Rotten Mushroom. Or one where I had to leap across a line of cannonballs while the Delfino Plaza theme played in the background. While you don't need to beat all of the stages to get the ending, there are plenty of hidden secrets to discover. These mostly net you cosmetic items that you can add to your Mii avatar to show off in the star attraction of the game, the Course World. Let's go. This is where you get to play an infinite amount of courses made by people from all over the world. For the review period, myself and other gaming outlets were given access to a special pre-release server, and thankfully all of us reviewers pulled through because the amount of creative stages that were on display here was great. My favourite stages included a boss fight between a giant Bowser Jr. and a red fire-breathing Yoshi, which felt like something right out of Cuphead. Another was built around the theme of an underwater shipwreck, where you constantly had to travel in and out of air pockets in the ship to swim to the flagpole. Perhaps most exciting, from what I've had to attend to experience, is just how diverse the levels are this time around. Not only does each game mode come with 10 themes, plus the option to toggle to a unique night mode, except for 3D World, but the additional clear conditions means that not all levels are as standard as just racing to the flagpole anymore. 
This keeps the game incredibly fresh, even when I came across some lesser well-built levels, and I couldn't get enough of what was on offer. Super Mario 3D World stages in particular don't play like any other game mode, and the creative way people have utilized its clear pipes is quite the sight. Then there are vertical courses, and what an amazing addition these are. For nearly every vertical focus course I played, the tension kept building the more I climbed up, and hitting the goal for these stages never stopped being satisfying. Finding the courses you want to play has been made a lot easier too. The search feature allows you to toggle between different game modes and by course tags, so your results feed isn't always clogged with auto Mario levels like the first game was. In replacement to the 100 Mario challenge, there's now Endless Mode, where you continue playing through selected courses in four different difficulty categories until you run out of lives. If you're really hardcore, you can try and aim for the top of the leaderboard, or you can just make fun of the guy at the top of the leaderboard for having no life outside of the game. Hey, I worked very hard for that joke. Yeah, so as you can tell, I played a lot of levels, more than any other of you are out there. So when I said the levels always felt fresh, I really mean it. I played almost every course that was on offer until I nearly ran out of courses to play. The only ones that I didn't beat were a handful of Kaizo levels or stages that could have been designed better. Still, given the sample size, the fact that the majority of levels turned out to be enjoyable should say a lot. Cooperative play, unfortunately, is where things get a bit muddled. The majority of user-made stages clearly do not have co-op in mind, and it can result in a chaotic mess. While there are some stages where this can work, like fairly straightforward ones, the lack of a co-op course tag feels like a major oversight, which hurts this game mode. There is a tag for multiplayer versus, which is the online competitive play, but unfortunately I was unable to try out this mode due to too few people playing the game at the same time. So be sure to check back to hear my verdict once the game is released. Super Mario Maker is an absolutely phenomenal follow-up to an already fantastic title. The greater variety of course themes and wider set of assets prevents the game from getting stale. If the first game is anything to go by, you can almost guarantee that this sequel is going to be supported by the community with new and creative stages for a long time to come. If you own a Switch, you need to own this game. If you don't have one, it is more than worth picking up a Switch just for this game. It's that good. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos straight away.